So I'll repeat myself a little bit here because I forgot to hit record. Uh, last day, we started looking at types of energy. We said that energy is the ability to do work. If you have energy, Hannah, you can apply a force over a distance. You can do work. We said there was many, many types of energy. One of the ones we're going to be looking at today is kinetic energy, the energy of motion. Heat is a form of energy. Uh, the heat I'm talking about is the type created by friction, like when you rub your hands together. I'm not talking about the heat that's created by combustion. That is also a form of energy, but that's not this heat. That's a different type of heat. Uh, gravitational potential energy. This is energy due to an object's height. Other stored, so potential energy was stored energy. We said in this unit, this course, we're going to look at two main types, kinetic and stored potential. This explains negative work. When you do negative work, you're losing energy. So if you ever get a negative, what we're really saying is you're bleeding energy out of the object. We did a question looking at a bow and arrow. I said, I like this question, I like this question, where the stored energy was force times distance. And you said, we said it turns into kinetic. I showed you the uh, human slingshot video, yes? Yeah, yeah, okay. Then we talked about a specific type of stored energy, gravitational stored energy. We're we'll kind of call it gravitational potential energy. In fact, we're just going to call it PE for short because it's the main one we're going to use. And we said that was MGH. Yes? Okay. And we got right to here, kinetic energy, and we're going to pause for a second. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. The energy of motion. So I can get rid of the pause thing, Mr. Duick. But I'm going to pause the video again for a second. Hey, why don't you find it on your green formula sheet? What is the equation for kinetic energy? A half mv squared. This is again a scalar equation. So the V is technically speed. Heck, even if you did put a negative in, what happens when you square a negative? It's a scalar equation. So the negative isn't going to make a difference anyways. Okay. Why a half? It, ask me another time where I can derive. Normally, I would derive it during a flex block if you wanted to or whatever. But trust me, that's what it is. So our two main types of energy, we have stored energy as MGH usually. We have kinetic energy as a half mv squared. Example four, uh, by the way, this equation here dominates your life in ways that you don't realize. In particular, don't write this down, that squared affects you in ways you don't realize. That's about to explain an awful lot of things that you just naturally understand, but maybe have wondered why is that the case? We'll get to that in a second. A 357 Magnum bullet weighs 8.1 grams. Nice try, Mr. Duick. 8.1 grams. I don't do physics with grams. Kilograms. How do I convert grams to kilograms? Yep. It's, yeah, it's either times by 10 to the next. It's divided by 1,000, right? So 8.1 divided by 1,000 is... Hey, you're getting your calculators out now. Good for you. Good boy. Yeah. Come on, Paige. You too. Yeah, anybody. But remember, we practice on our calculators. It helps us stay involved and follow along. Paige, what'd you get? Two zeros and then an eight one. Good. And it travels at 490 meters per second. These numbers are accurate. I looked them up. How much kinetic energy does it possess? So this is going to be straight plug and chug. Ke equals a half mv squared. It's going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.0081 times 490. Don't forget the squared. By far the most common sloppy mistake, Victor. Kids write the squared. They forget to hit it on their calculator. On their calculator on their calculator, on their calculator. Okay, they're figuring it out now. How much kinetic energy does a fairly heavy duty bullet have? 
972.4. Anybody else? I'm, yes? Yeah? So I'm going to call it 972 units. It's energy. What do we measure energy in? Well, if it's the ability to do work, it's measured in joules. Okay? How many of you are getting your driver's license sometime in the next couple of years? Keep your hands up. How many of you are going to start paying for your own gas sometime in the next couple of years? Keep your hands up. So, a little tick in the trade for you. Car has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. I made a nice round number. How much kinetic energy is required to reach a speed of 5 meters per second? Let's assume we start at rest. Well, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. It's going to be 0.5 times 1,000 times 5 squared. Which is what? Jay, what'd you get? I can't hear, sorry? 12500? Zero, zero? A 12 and the 500 after that, 12,500. Is that right, folks? Yeah. Units, Jaya? Yeah. B. Remember I said that squared dominates your life in ways you don't realize? So here's what a lot of people think. Twice as fast will take twice the energy, they think. Let's find out. Ke equals a half mv squared. It's going to be 0.5 times 1,000 times 10 squared. You could probably just backspace and edit on your calculator and replace the 5 with a 10 if, like me, you're naturally lazy. What do you get? Spoiler alert, I don't think you get twice as fast. What do you get? Doing the math in my head. Do you get 50,000? Can you all do me a favor? Can you go 50,000 divided by 12,500? What is that? How many times bigger is B compared to A? Not twice as big. How many times bigger? Four? Four? Remember that. How much kinetic energy is required to reach a speed of 15 meters per second? Okay, let's go straight to plugging in the numbers. So it's going to be 0.5 times 1,000 times 15 squared. Now, 15 meters per second is three times bigger than five. Again, spoiler alert, you're not, get an ans you're not gonna get an answer three times bigger than five. What do you get? Alex, what'd you get? Mesa, you awake? I saw that yawn. 112,000? What? Really? Hey, could you all do me a favor? Can you go 112,500 divided by 12,500? What? No, 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 no. Try it again. You missed a zero somewhere. Answer C divided by answer A. What do you get? No. What do you get exactly as a number? Nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine. Why is three times faster nine times more energy required? Why is two times faster four times more energy required? Why is five times faster 25 times more energy required? Why is 8 times faster, 64 times more energy required? Are you spotting the pattern? Do you see it? That's squared there. And so one of the things that I'll tell you is, and you'll figure this out when you start paying your own gas bills, the faster you go, the more gas you use. Kids, sorry, young adults are idiots, okay? When they're in their 20s, they're like, oh, I'm going to go 125 on the Coquihalla and get there faster. And then they realized it cost them like 70 bucks more than if they'd gone 100. And so they have to weigh, hmm, maybe if I'd slowed down a little bit, that squared kicks in. I actually save a lot of gas. I don't save twice as much. 
I save a squared times as much. Yeah. How does changing, changing gears reduces the RPMs? And so it, it's, cars are a more complicated system that I'm letting on. But I'll, you know what? Let's look at it later on in terms of a bike. That'll be a little, and it's specifically a bike with no gears, the old classic, old style frame bike bike. So example six, suppose an object, turn the page, suppose an object has a kinetic energy of 5,000 joules. How much kinetic energy is required to double its speed? I'll give you a hint, not 10,000. I heard someone, what? Careful. Double, what's double squared? Four times bigger. What about to triple its speed? What's triple squared? Yeah. It's going to be nine times, so 5,000 times 45,000 joules. What about to quadruple its speed? It won't take four times the energy. What will it take? Four squared. So what's 5,000 times 16? 80,000, I think? So Hannah, this explains, first of all, it explains about the last 40 years of sports science in any sport where you use an object to hit something else. Hockey, baseball, tennis, golf. It explains why golf clubs, tennis rackets, and hockey sticks have become lighter, not heavier. Because the lighter it is, the faster you can swing it. Now it's true, in our equation, there is an M. As you make it lighter, you'll have less kinetic energy, but you more than make up for it because of that squared being able to swing it faster. Any golfers here? A little bit, okay. So in, I used to run the golf team. In golf, we always talk about club head speed. We don't talk about the mass of your club. It's all about how fast you can swing the club. Mass helps. It's, you know, a driver is a heavier head than say a wedge. But trust me, the drivers that you're using are way lighter than they were 40 years ago. Way lighter. Okay. Tennis, the same idea. The tennis rackets that I played with when I was in high school, now they're like, oh, lead. I look at the ones they make nowadays. Yeah, and again, there is an M in the equation, so there is some trade-off. But that squared is huge. This also explains why it's more difficult to speed up once you already possess kinetic energy. You may have noticed if you're riding your bike, it's relatively easy to go from zero to let's say five meters per second, which is a five meter per second increase. But to go from five to 10, the same five meter per second increase, you gotta put in way more energy, right? Oh, and to go from 10 to 15, that's another five meter per second increase, you're really giving it now. It's that squared. It's not a nice linear relationship. Eliana, if you wanna go faster, that squared kicks in like you would not believe, okay? So it's relatively easy to increase from zero to five, tougher to go from five to 10, even tougher to go from 10 to 15, even though they're all five meter per second increase, if you actually run the numbers with the squareds in there, you'll realize, make, make up a mass and actually just crunch the numbers and you realize that took way more energy. Uh, this also explains, and now I got to get serious, this is why I asked if you're planning on driving, why damage to occupants in car accidents is so dramatically different between an accident, let's say at 20, and an accident at 80 kilometers per hour. The 80 kilometer per hour accident will experience how many times more damage, not four times more damage, how many times more damage? 16. because there's that much more energy page and that energy's got to go somewhere. Oh, and you know what else? And I'm about to explain 90% of car accidents. It will also take 16 times further to stop, not four times further. 
If you're going twice as fast as you normally drive, it will take you four times further to stop, not twice as far to stop. Most people don't know that. If you're going three times as fast as you normally drive because you're a stupid driver, it's going to take you nine times longer to stop. Nine times the distance. Not, four, not three times the distance because of that squared. Example seven. A 25 kilogram mass object has a kinetic energy of 924.5 joules. Ooh, huh. Maxine, what does example seven want me to find? Ooh, fast. Uh, do you see an acceleration or a time or a VI? In other words, am I going to use VF equals VI plus H? No, in fact, what did they give me? Energy. Can you look at the kinetic energy equation and can you get the V by itself? You know what? That one we're going to be doing an awful lot, so let's walk through it together. All of us, let's write down KE equals, I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to write it as MV squared over 2. First of all, is that still a half MV squared? Making it look a little prettier. Maxine, what do we want to get by itself? How will I move the M over? How will I move the 2 over? And then how do I get rid of a squared? Okay. So you're telling me that V is going to be 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass square root? You would be correct. We're going to use that one an awful lot because very shortly, today or next lesson, we're going to look at roller coasters. And of course, we want to know how fast you're going at the bottom of the hill. that fast. Uh, it's going to be the square root of 2 times 924.5 all over 25. All of you want to practice typing this into your calculator. It would be foolish for you to sit here. By the way, if you don't have a calculator, I'm looking around. Let me know and I'll gently damage your self-esteem and I'll give you a loaner. All right, Mr. Duke, let's finally open up your calculator now that they're finally going. Okay, let's see what we get. What if I can do this in one step? Square root bracket 2 times 924.5 divided by 25. 8.6? Units, Maxine? Yep. This is a, technically a speed, not a velocity, because these are all scalar numbers. So... Let's start to look at roller coasters. I don't know about you folks. I'm a roller coaster nut. I'll go on anything. I love roller coasters. I've been on some pretty good ones. I've been to Six Flags, Magic Mountain, and to Universal Studios. I've been on some pretty good ones. A roller coaster has a kinetic energy of that much at the bottom of the first hill. So how fast is it traveling? Well, looking at my kinetic energy equation on my green sheet, I want to get the V by itself. I'm going to write out the equation. You should have it on your green sheet. Oh, some of you don't like the two. Some of you like this better, 0.5 mv squared. And I'm fine if you like that. Fine. How would I get the v by itself? How will I move the m over? Divide. How will I move the 0.5 over? Divide, and then square root. You can either go like this, the square root of ke over 0.5 m or the square root of 2 ke over m. Those are the same equation. We ran into something similar when we were doing a half at squared and getting the t by itself. So it's going to be 2 times 137,200 divided by 350. How fast are we going at the bottom of the first hill? Uh, by the way, if you're standing in line and you calculate this while you're standing in line, it adds to the experience. It does. If you know how fast you're going to be going before you get on, it makes the ride better. Damn it, it does. What'd you get?
Victor, what'd you get? 1.5? I, I love the fact that you're going roller coasters go faster. Than, I love that I've taught you not to trust your calculator. So let's think about how we're going to type this. It's going to be, did you use the one with the 0.5 or did you use the one with the M? The, uh, this one here? So two times one, three, seven, 200 divided by 350 and then square root answer button. You see where your typo was yet or not? That's good. What you all, uh, 28? Is that a good coaster? Could you convert that to kilometers per hour? I'd like to know how fast we're going. What'd you get? I'm going on that. Hey, if it's over 100, I'm in. Okay. Well, here's what I would say. This one, I'll stand in line for for a while. If it was 12 meters per second, I'm going on it if the line's empty, but I'm not standing in line for a while for that ride, right? If all the kinetic energy came from potential energy, ooh, Hannah, what's B want me to find? Height. Which version of energy that we've looked at has height in it? Let's write down PE equals MGH. So now we're starting to analyze amusement park rides. Hannah, what do they want me to find? How would I get the H by itself? Yep. So H is going to be PE divided by MG. What's M? What's G? 9.8. I'm assuming you've all memorized the 9.8 without trying to memorize it, right? We've used it so often. Oh, what's PE? Well, if all the kinetic energy came from potential, what was our kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill, Hannah? You know what? That was our potential energy at the top of the hill because it said all of the kinetic came from that potential. How high does the first hill have to be if I want to build a roller coaster that goes 28 meters per second at the bottom? And now we're doing some ride engineering. Is there more than one thing on the bottom, Quinn? Brackets around the bottom. Of course you remembered that. I didn't have to remind you, yes? One, three, seven, 200 divided by bracket 350 times 9.8. 40, 40 meters? I'll even go to three sig figs. I'll stick a point zero in there just to say, hey, it was exactly 40, not roughly 40. So now you're starting to see some of the very basics of designing amusement park rides. All most amusement park rides do is they take potential energy and they turn it into kinetic energy. Doing that mucks around with the normal force. We'll pay money for that. There's two main types of amusement park rides. There's ones that change your height. There's also ones that go in a circle. In physics 12, we'll analyze the ones that go in a circle. That's different, but also cool. Oh, and then I guess there's a third type, bumper cars. Those are momentum and collisions. Did we look at momentum and collisions? Those are all just conservation of momentum. Right? Uh, example nine. How high would we need to lift a 65 kilogram object to give it a potential energy of 15,288. By the way, I should say I like example eight like, and, and example nine, but I really like example eight. You know what? I'll be blatant. There's going to be a roller coaster or two on your test. It's going to be the funnest test ever. You're going to ride a roller coaster. Uh, how high would we need to... Oh, you know what? I think we can use Hannah's theorem here again. Potential energy divided by mg. What's the potential energy according to this question, Mesa?
Yep. 15,288. And 65. 9.8. By the way, if we move this object to the moon, would we have to lift it higher, lower, or the same height? to get the same energy. If we were on the moon, which number here would change? Would it be bigger or smaller? So if you're dividing by a smaller number, what happens to your answer? Yeah, I have to lift it higher. Those of you that sign up for Physics 12, I do more and more purely thought algebraic questions like that with no numbers, and I expect you to just puzzle out, look, how do fractions work? If you're dividing by a smaller number, your answer is bigger. If you're dividing by a bigger number, your answer is smaller. Uh, I got 24. Uh, in a little bit, they're going to stop working out evenly because in a little bit, I'm going to get tired of doing all the math and making them work out even. But for now, in our lesson, we're OK. Turn the page. Another great example of potential to kinetic are pile drivers. You may have noticed when the Golden Ears Bridge was being built back when you were younger, there was pile drivers going all the time. And you often see them where they're building bridges, where they're pounding piles into the river. So suppose we have a 2,500 kilogram pile driver and we've done the numbers, we've looked at the soil, it needs to hit the ground at 18 meters per second to drive the pile in. First of all, ooh, Raphael, what's A asking me to find? Kinetic energy. Uh, what's my equation for kinetic energy, my friend? Yep. So it's going to be 0. 0.5 times 2,500 times 18. Don't forget the squared. Four hundred and five thousand. Yep. Units. Yes. Okay. How can we give it that energy of motion, that kinetic energy? Well, we could use compressed air or some kind of. You know what? The easiest is to lift it up and drop it to give it potential energy, and as it falls, let it turn into kinetic energy. So if all the potential energy comes from, sorry, if all the kinetic energy comes from potential energy, how high do we need to raise it? Ooh, Quinn, what's this question asking me to find? Get the H by itself, please. You could just have your green sheet sitting right there, and then you're training your eyes to look in the right place instead of on a lesson that you won't have in front of you. I'm just saying. PE divided by mg. So it's going to be, well, 405,000, because apparently that's how much I need, divided by 2,500 times 9.8. And I get... 16.5 meters. What if when you run these numbers and then you go inspect the site, there's something in the way, there's an overhanging tree and you can't raise it 16.5 meters? Then I guess you need a bigger mass. Okay, and this is what engineers would look at all ahead of time. Oh, not going to work. 2,500 kilograms is not going to do it. Let's get a bigger one. Don't have to raise it as high. Still accomplish the same thing. A person is running at 7 meters per second. If they have a kinetic energy of 1,764. Ooh, Eliana, what's this asking me to find? Okay, get the M by itself. You know what? Let's write out the kinetic energy equation one more time. KE equals a half. Oh, you know what? 
instead of a half mv squared, I'm going to write it as mv squared over 2, because that looks prettier. All right, get the m by itself. Times by 2. Is there a squared on the m? So do I need to square root? You, and I'm glad you made that mistake. That's a common one. First of all, the ke is going to stay where it is. Times by 2. I need to move the v squared over. Okay, so I've showed you how to get any one of those by itself. The kinetic energy equation has three variables, kinetic energy, m, and v squared. Yeah. Times oh, one. Yep. That's a good question. No, that's a great question. Okay. And yeah, don't square root. There's no squared on the m. I know there's a squared in the equation, but there's no squared on the m. I'm not square rooting here. Uh, what do you get? Seventy-two. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. It says spot the energy transformations in this video. Uh, we watched the cog, the the Honda commercial, last class. I got more of those, but right now I'm going to say, what's your homework? So uh, number one is good. Two is good. I think I'm going to assign all of these because they're mostly plug and chug. Uh, you can cross out 16, but the rest are good. And I think if you write smallish, you might be able to actually write. I left some space on here, so if you you can write write on here, or you can do it on some piece of paper. I don't care. Okay.